Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Interesting um, on that announcement that uh, when he shares we're, uh, we're about our church and uh, he says uh, you know that we're a normal church. I say we're a peculiar bunch. <laughs> Amen. Hey, yeah. Hallelujah. You walk into our church in the morning and someone's clapping as you walk through the door. You know, are you talking about excited to see you? I, th- I, I, I thought, man, you know what? If you've never been appreciated for going to church, this is a great church to come to. Amen. Amen. You know, we, and we do. We truly, uh, we truly love and, uh, and honor those that uh, commit themselves to the work of the gospel. And um, we love those that are lost out there because, you know, without love, how can you reach them? Amen? Amen. So we need, to, we need to reach them with God's love. And the Bible says that he wishes that none, that the Father wishes that none would perish, but all would have eternal life. And, and so our mission is to, you know, you might say, you know, stop talking to me about the Lord. No, our mission is to talk to you about the Lord so that you don't miss the one opportunity you have to get to heaven. You know, we don't know the day or the hour when we leave this earth, and and it's it's our duties as Christians, as believers that know the truth, to help those that, that, uh, that have never heard the gospel. So if we don't talk to you, then how do you know, how do we know that you don't know what we know about the good news? We've got a secret that we want to share with you, and it's good news, amen? And uh, so anyway, praise the Lord. Um, I'm so excited to be with you this morning, and I'm just so excited to worship with you. And, and uh, I want to remind you that uh, when you come in, the, the parking lot doors, there's arrows pointing to the sanctuary. We are sociable, distanced. Um, we do our very best to greet one another from, you know, and, um, you know without uh, too, uh, too much uh, social distancing. Um, Anyway, so there's hand washing stations at both doors. We exit out the west doors there. Thank you so much for helping with that. Remember the offering and stuff is at that door. I know we're going to do some announcements here, but I just thought I'd let you know that as we're moving along here. And then those of you that are at home and uh, maybe you just haven't felt like coming out yet, you know what? You're, you're going to want to probably take a step of faith and uh, wear a mask or whatever you need to do, but come to church. We need to we need to fill the house, amen? we got 150 spaces. we got churches all over the land. You know, we have, we have churches all over the land that are closed, amen? And uh, even if you don't belong, even if you belong to another church, come and visit us until your church opens up. The Bible says do not distinguish yourself in the fellowship of the brethren, right? Like join together with brothers and sisters, and when your church opens up, have a good day. Don't let the door hit you, right? We, we don't, we don't want to we don't want to be sheep still, but we want you to join in fellowship and be a part of what we're doing here at York and Victory Church uh, until your place opens up for worship. Don't miss the opportunity. And those of you that are looking for a church, if, you, if you're not that far, like a church that's alive is worth the drive, amen? 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 So, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's a little ways, we used to have people drive an hour and a half and then they just move closer. <laughs> yeah, so, so anyway, it's awesome. Anyway, we, we want to get back to normal. So those of you that are listening online and going, man, I just love sitting at home. You know what? That's not what God wants. God wants you to overcome your fear of this sickness that they're talking about. And uh, how do we kill the sickness if we don't confront it? How do you resist the devil if you don't confront him? Amen? You resist the devil by getting into his face and saying, hey, get out of here in Jesus' name. Right. Amen? 
Amen. So anyway, if you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you need to wear a bodysuit, wear a bodysuit. But get to church. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for those that are tuning in this morning. And thank you for those that are here this morning. We, we give you praise, glory, and honor that we're, 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 we're in church and we're serving you. And, and we're reaching out into the community and doing the best we can to bring people into the house. And Father, not just this house, but into your house. Winning them for you, Lord. So we thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for your presence. And we ask that you just bless this service and bless those that are listening online today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do we still have a light for the camera? Anyway, bless you, and we'll see you soon.
Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that if uh, we don't cry out, he'll make the stones cry out. Amen? He's so, uh, he's so uh, happy uh, when we cry out to him. Amen? So we should never, you know, anyone that was here Tuesday night, um, listening to Braden and Elizabeth, uh, you know what, uh, there's something to say about, the, you know, when, when you cry out and not be hindered by who's around you or who's beside you or, or what people think, focus on what he thinks. Amen? What the king of kings thinks, that's what really matters. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You know, and, uh, and you, need to, uh, you need to stand your ground. And in order to overcome the devil, you need to resist the devil. And, uh, and he will flee. Amen? So no matter what you're going through, no matter what your struggle is, no matter what your trial is, you know what? It, the devil brings harm on people. Amen? He, he attacks people. That's what he does. He's come to kill, rob, and destroy. And, God is, and Jesus Christ came to bring you life and life more abundantly. Amen? Amen. We, need to, we need to memorize that. We need to let that soak into our hearts so that when we're under attack, we know it's not the Lord. It's the enemy. Now, trust me, the Lord allows it to strengthen you, not to hurt you, right? So, and we'll get into more of that as our message goes in. But I was getting a little bit on the forefront there coming in. Anyway, so praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here with us this morning. Um, you know what? I, you know, praise the Lord. <laughs> thought someone was talking to me there for a second. <laughs> anyway, so thanks for tuning in. Those of you that are online this morning, remember to give us a thumbs up and a like and share the messages. And uh, you know what? If any time that the world needs a message, it's now. Amen? A message of hope and a message of freedom. And, you know, so, so uh, you know, those, are, those, of, those of us that know the truth already, the truth has set us free. And so we should be, uh, we should be out there sharing the truth online. And, uh, you know, you have many different podcasts going on. And remember, the devil's working just as hard. Uh, to to destroy, so we need to up our game and uh, and 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 get the whole church body, the whole the church, the church of Jesus Christ, right, to come against that devil, amen, amen. and uh, push back the darkness because we have the power, amen. He's got no power. I mean, remember, he's not he's not omnipotent. He can't be everywhere at once. His little dominions are kind of everywhere, right? Because a third of the angels fell out of heaven. A third of the angels—that's a lot of angels, one for each of us, right? One to, one, to, one to attack each of us, right? How many know that everybody fights a demon, right? So somehow those are coming from somewhere, right? They're, not, they're, they're, they're fallen angels, amen? And, uh, and so remember, Lucifer is continuously accusing you. He's the accuser of the brethren. So, so where is he? He's, he's sitting there saying, God, look at that person. Look at that person. Look what they're doing. And then Jesus is like, yeah, but Father, they're covered in my blood. Remember, and Jesus has all the power and all authority over heaven and earth. It was given to him when he went back, when he died on the cross, right? So, so we have to remember that, that, uh, that you know, people, I, I hear people often comment and they say, you know, Satan's attacking me. Well, he is attacking you through his dominions, but it's not him personally. He's not coming to visit you, right, with his big horns. How many know he doesn't have big horns either? He's a beautiful angel, right? That's what he was, right? So, um, but the world has, predict, you know, made him out to be um, some character, amen? So that's why it says, be careful on who you entertain, right? Because, uh, you know, they can look real good on the outside. <laughs> How many know the Pharisees look real good? Yep. Dress real nice, looking real good. But if they had the opportunity to tear, rip you apart or, tear, or rip you off, they would do it. Amen? And so we have to uh, be aware of the serpent. Anyway, so Father, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for this opportunity that we have to share the gospel and to uh, come into people's homes. And uh, we ask, Lord, that you just bring us increase in that, but also, Father, we'd ask that you bring increase into the house, that people would uh, shake the fear off and uh, put a mask on or whatever they need to do, but come and join the fellowship of the brethren. Amen? Because it's so important. Hallelujah. Anyway, I want to uh, get Warren to come bring some announcements this morning. I don't know if he's going to talk about my dad's book or not, but it's right here. <laughs> he's read a little bit of it, and... Uh, and, uh, yeah, nobody's read it to me yet, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an awesome um, book. But this, this book here that uh, Pastor Mark's dad, father wrote, it's an awesome, awesome study. If you want to get it and read it, it's $15, and there's a lot of provoking thoughts in there, same as Corey's book. There's a lot of op opportunity to give a lot of thought to some of the stuff that, that God has showed them. But the, uh, I have to say both books, they're coming from a family of earth, authors, not authors, and, uh, <laughs> They're really good books. I encourage. They're both fifteen dollars. 
You'd love to, love to read them. If you love studying, that's a book to get. Simple as that. Really yes. simple. And uh, how is everybody this morning? Good. Awesome. You know, I don't, I don't know why this, I got reminded this morning of this. Um, okay. <laughs> Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Who enjoyed Tuesday night? Come on. Wasn't that awesome? Uh, what, what a way to kick off prayer and worship. Uh, that was just fantastic in Bible study. That was good teaching. We need to be humble, don't we? We need to humble ourselves. I loved it when, when uh, Braden brought up that scripture in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called my name, will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face. I'll tell you what, that scripture right there just brought me right down to my knees. Mm. Right? But anyway, it's, it was awesome. And this Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we're going again. I'm not going to say it's going to be the same as it was last Tuesday. But in our prayer, prayer times, <laughs> Crystal laughing, and our prayer times and worship and Bible studies, it's good. And it gets gooder and gooder, right? And that's greater a, and greater. That, that's a word from the Maritimes, gooder, right? But uh, I think they use that down in the Appalachians too. But <laughs> same thing, you know. And so I encourage you to come out for Tuesday night. Um, we're going to announce at, at, at some point in time in the future about Celebrate Recovery. So just stay tuned for that one. Um, I, I don't think there is anything else coming up right away other than the books there. Don't forget about them. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm being reminded. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, Pastor Mark. I'm being reminded. I, I've shared this with you, Pastor Mark. Of when I was in my truck accident back in 1981, and there was four days there that I was not with it. I wasn't awake but I wasn't out. I could hear the doctors talking. I could hear people talking around me and screaming out from inside going, no, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, there, there was something they were going to take out of me. Uh, and I was like, no, don't, don't, don't. But I, I couldn't speak. I was in that state where I wasn't awake, but I wasn't out. Mm. And that was for four days, right, that I went through that. And this morning, sitting, I got reminded of that state. What a horrible, horrible state to be in, where you're laying there, and and I'm, I'm I know what's going on, but I can't do anything about it. It's like, <laughs> it's like our Christian walk. We're praying and praying and praying. God, I need this. I need a miracle. And it's like nobody's listening. And I can't do anything about it. But don't give up. Don't give up. I didn't give up for them four days. And after four days, I woke up. And I could talk. And I could relate. Don't give up. I'm talking to somebody. Don't give up. We're just about there. We're just. You know what? I've been listening to the prophets for a while. And I, I, this week, they're saying the same thing. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. We're just about there. Don't give up. As I said last week, that old song, don't give up on the brink of a miracle. Don't give up. I encourage you this morning, don't give up, and we're going to pray for the offering. Just as we pray, I want to remind you of a story. I was listening to Rodney Howard Brown earlier this week, and he told of a time he was in Vietnam. And they're in this service, and God was starting to move. So he said to his people, he said, we're not going to take time for an offering. We're just going to go right into it, right? Someone in the service heard him, a young girl, and she came over to him and said, don't do that to us. Let us sow into your ministry. Don't take that opportunity from us. Let us give. It was the biggest offering they received, that whole campaign. Right, Amen. God's people. I'm talking to God's people right now. I, you want to give. I know you want to give. I know you do. This is your chance. Don't not sow into the ministry that God has put here on this planet to shake the earth. <laughs> to shake this earth and wake us up. And you want to see God move. Hang on to that miracle. Hang on to it. I encourage you this morning, let us bind together and hang on to it. 
Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have given us and provided with us, Lord. There are countries, Lord, in this world that can't do what we're doing right now. But you have given it to us. We are so privileged. Allow us the privilege and opportunity to stand in the gap for those people, Lord. To stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters that can't do what we're doing. That can't stand here publicly and pronounce that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that privilege, for that opportunity today, Lord. And bless your people, Lord, as they give. Bless their hearts, Lord. Swell our hearts to overflowing with blessings today, Lord, as they give and give and give. God bless. God bless. God bless. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Warren, where can they give? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking Joanne's not here to remind me all this <laughs> stuff this morning. But you can give it at, at uh, ybcadmin at sastel.net. I got it. <laughs> and if you, if you want to give and you can't, you're not computer savvy like I am, you can call the church. You can stop by, have a coffee, drop it off to Pastor Mark or Joanne here. And good morning, Pedro. <laughs> it's good to see you. And... Uh, it, but but give, right? YVC admin at sastel.net and drop it off at the church or even call. If, you, if you're, you're housebound, call the church. We'll come pick it up if you want to give that badly. We have no problem Amen. doing that, right? And God bless you all. You guys are such awesome people. Give yourselves a big round Amen. of applause. God bless. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen, amen. That's great. Thank you for that uh, this morning. Uh, remember, as you're exiting the building, there's offering plates at the back door on your exit there. Um, and you'll, that's where you can pick up a book if, you, if you're interested. And uh, so if you're making out a check this morning or you're making an offering, you can add $15 in there. If you'd like one of those books, they will be at the back door. I'm not sure if we have Corey's, but we have Dad's. So, um, but anyway, so I want to try to get that in as many hands as I can because it's a great book and you can pass it around, maybe hand it to somebody for Christmas. Amen? What a great Christmas present. Hallelujah. Hate to talk about Christmas, but it's coming soon <laughs> to a country near you. <clears throat> anyway, praise the Lord. I'm so great, grateful that people are, uh, you know, have, you know our, our tithes and offerings have been doing awesome. You know, I'm not saying that don't give because they're doing awesome. I'm saying that you're doing a great job, and thank you so much for helping us and supporting our ministry. And uh, you know what? So give yourselves a hand for that. Um, you know what? We're renovating a kitchen, and uh, uh, we, we were uh, not a kitchen. We're renovating it, uh, the kitchen into classrooms. Uh, for for Sunday school, and that's coming along great. Um, so if anybody's um, interested in volunteering during the week, you know we're always looking for people to help clean, sweep, and and uh, mop and and uh, everything. So uh, just stop by and say, hey, what can I do? And I'm sure we can find something for you to do if you're interested. Remember, uh, Serendipity is always looking for helpers, right? Uh, Serendipity is on 50 Broadway Street, right across from the Broadway Medical Clinic or uh, behind the skateboard park. Uh, so if you're interested in helping out, then they could use your help. Do we have any stuff in the back? Yes, we do. We got a lot of stuff in the back that needs to be organized and uh, sorted. And uh, we got some desks and furniture there that needs to be uh, uh, put to, you know, set up so that we can take pictures of it. Um, and also the daycare, you know, is always looking for uh, applicants. So don't hesitate to drop off an application. I don't know if they're hiring at the moment, but they are. They're always, you know, you never know when they're looking, right? So uh, don't hesitate to drop off an application, either part-time, full-time, anytime, sometime. Amen? <clears throat> So, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm excited to be here this morning. I got a little joke for you this morning. I hope, that, hope it uh, humors your heart, and because laughter is good like medicine. And uh, I tried to give a couple to my wife this morning, but obviously uh, she wasn't feeling very well. So we pray for her in Jesus' name, because my jokes didn't bring medicine to her. So, anyway. Anyway, uh, sometimes she just kind of looks at me. I mean, at least I think she's looking at me. I can feel it, right? It's like, don't ever say that again. <laughs> you know that? You ever get that? It's like, yeah, don't use that one again. <laughs> anyway, uh, but anyway, this is a, this is a, this is a, a, a better one. And uh, so this gentleman one day was uh, going through the store, and he decided to steal a can of peaches. Not a good idea. Anyway, <laughs> he gets arrested, and he's standing in front of the judge, and the judge said, you stole a can of peaches. And he puts his head down, and the judge says, how many peaches were in the can? He said, five, Your Honor. He said, well, he said, I'm putting you in jail for five weeks, one for every peach. And, uh, and a few seconds later, his wife stands up and says, uh, Judge, do you mind if I say something? And uh, the judge says, no, ma'am, go ahead. 
he stole a can of peas, too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to York and Victory Church Comedy Hour. I'm your host, Pastor Mark. Amen? Anyway, let's get serious. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, anyway, um, you know, I just want to be real this morning as uh, Braden and them are real on Tuesday. Uh, we are, we, we our, our, just so you know, our Tuesday night prayer meetings and Bible studies are not always somebody up here preaching, right? Although we may do that once in a while just as a little something else, right? So we watch movies, we watch great Christian movies sometimes, um, but we, we get into nice discussions in, of Bible, amen? I mean, like learning about the Bible. Right, so that you have tools to work with when you go downtown or you're witnessing somebody, you know what you're going to say, and you know what's truth and what's not truth. I mean, no, there's a lot of theories out there and a lot of thoughts and ideas that are from different people, amen? People are always giving their opinions and they're saying stuff that doesn't even line up with the Bible, amen? They're just, it's just their thoughts and it's, their, it's, their, it's what they think the Bible says, but, but, but they really haven't even read the Bible, and they just, you know, they, they think that this is the way it should be or that should be that way. And, and, uh, and that's not the case. So, so we need to come together and study the Bible so that we can learn and grow and, and, uh, and, uh, and be able to share with one another the truth. Because the Bible says, if you mislead my children, it'd be better a millstone be tied around your neck and you dropped into the sea. Right. right? That's how bad it is for you to give misrepresentation to the Bible. Amen. And so I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that you just need to say, Lord, forgive me, because I may have said something that maybe wasn't 100% correct. Look at your word. If it doesn't come from the Bible, don't, don't use it. Amen? If you're reading a book and someone's got an opinion and you run with it, it might not be right. Amen? So even when you read these two books we were talking about this morning, I'm not saying, hey, check them out in the Bible, right? right. Do they line up with the word of God? Right, because these are opinions and and uh, and ideas of scriptures, which are good, and it's good to read, it's good to study, but you know what? Line it up with the Word of God. Amen, amen. amen. Um, so anyway, on saying that, uh, uh, when you line things up with the Word uh, for our Tuesday night Bible studies, we that's why we have our our times of uh, of uh, you know um, discussion on on uh, controversial issues. Amen. It's, it's because there's a lot of things out there that, that people are, you know, that split churches over. And we're, we don't do that. We come together on a friendly note, and we have a discussion. And, uh, and I'm sorry that you guys aren't always right. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, some of the thoughts I've always had, and I've been taught, right? You've got to remember, I'm under all kinds of teaching and leadership and different people speaking into my life and, and sharing. And sometimes those things stick to me. You go, you start reading, and so, or someone brings a scripture, and you go, hmm. Maybe I do need to look at this a little bit deeper, right? And so it is so important that you, you, know, you don't just follow somebody, but you follow the Bible. You know, what we were talking this morning is people are being ushered and greeter, greet, uh, greeted in. And, you know, and, and, the, you know it's, it, it was, and I'm, I'm not saying it's great to, be, uh, to have smiling people at the door and happy people. Because the, you know, if you're going to be born again, you're going to be born again happy. Amen? Amen? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So how can you have the Holy Spirit and not have joy? Right. So if you don't have joy, you need to find out why you don't have joy. Amen? Amen. You're, lucky your wife, you're lucky if your wife is named Joy because then you wake up with her every day. <laughs> right? But no, seriously, you need to have joy in your heart at all times. Amen? So yeah. we need to have that joy. We need to have that peace that we're on the right track, that we're doing the right thing. And don't let the outside world discourage you and confuse you and bring all kinds of torment into your heart. Trust the Lord and he will lead you. Amen? Amen. Don't lean on your own understanding, but lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So we need, to, we need to do that. I want to go to a familiar scripture that we've, that we've talked about quite a bit. And uh, I don't think we can ever have too much of it. Jeremiah 29, 11. <laughs> Amen? I, I, did Braden use that? Yeah, he did. Okay, yeah. So, I thought he might have. I just I was looking at it going, man. And I know I've used it in the past. You're not, you know, quite a bit. But you know what? It's relevant to my message this morning. Again, I think it's relevant to our life. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to get my sister to uh, read Jeremiah 20, 29, 11 uh, to 14. For I know the plans have for you, says the Lord, 
They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and hope in those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, sorry, you will find me, I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and I will bring you home again to your own land. Amen. Amen. So God's plan for our lives is not to destroy us, right? But to set us free. To, to not bring disaster into our world, but to bring freedom to our lives. And not just bring freedom, but draw us unto him. When we seek him, we will find him. The problem is, is that people don't seek him, so they can't find him. Amen. They get discouraged or they get mad about something that's happened and they, and they, and they stop looking for him or they, they, they put a wall up so, so not even Christians can speak into their life anymore. We need to take down walls, amen? How many, how many agree that we need to take down walls that stop the Holy Spirit from being able to speak into your life? Because the Holy Spirit is our lifeline to the Father, amen, and to Jesus Christ, amen? It is the Holy Spirit that talks directly to the Father, Right? Even Jesus said, I do, what I, I do what my Father tells me to do. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Say, I do, I do what my Father, what my father tells, me to do. tells me to do. And how can you do what your Father tells you to do in heaven if you don't listen to him? Amen? If you block him out. So the moment that you say, oh, I can't believe I'm going through this. You know, and this is the, this is the problem. And I'm just going to be real with you. We're just going to have a little talk this morning. This is the problem, is that we, 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 we get saved, and we go, woo you know, everything's all great and, and joyful. And then all of a sudden, the trials and tribulations, how many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Has anybody felt a little bit of trials and tribulations in, in their life? I'm not talking about today. Maybe you're in the moment of celebrating, because you just came through a victory, you just came through a trial, and now you're in the, in the victory moment. The reason that we go through the trials and tribulations are to strengthen us, Amen. not to push us away and not to make us feel like God's not for us or with us. This is what the scripture says. It says that, that, uh, that, uh, that I have a plan for you. Amen? Yeah. I have a purpose. Not to harm you. Not to destroy you. That's what the enemy wants to do. My plan for you, the Lord's saying, is to build you, to bring you out of captivity. Do you know what captivity is? Yeah. It's, it's being captured by the enemy. You're, you're in the world. So, so the God's plan now is to bring you out of the world, out of that captivity, and set you free. The Bible says who the, who, the, who the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen? And so we need to have uh, that understanding in our hearts that, that, that no matter what we're going through, no matter what attacks we're under, no matter what's going on in our life, that, that it's not to destroy you. That's not God's intention to allow the enemy to attack you. And, and to destroy you. It's, it's, to allow you it's, it's, a, it's to allow the enemy to have a little bit of rain in your life to bring you under control, amen? So that he can steer you into the place where you need to be. How do you call out for Jesus with desperation if you're not under attack? Why would you ask the Father to help you if you have everything? And you're just, if, he, if, he, if you got saved... And you just sat back in a lazy boy. All the money that you wanted was flowing in. All the, everything that you could ever desire is just right there. You would lack nothing. Right? In, in, the, in the world sense. And we, but God brings trials so that we, we seek him. So that we seek the kingdom of God. First, above all things. Right? And so, so we, we, we see these uh, trials and tribulations. And I want to take you to into the story of, of Moses setting the Israelites free. And I know we've, you know, there's a lot of you that have gone through this. You might have, Jeremiah 29, I, I can quote that, Pastor Mark, a hundred times over. I can quote it backwards. I'm sick of hearing it. I want to remind you that there are people beyond you scholars that have maybe never heard it before. Right? Maybe someone's tuning in online this morning that the Lord has you know, how many, how, many, how many times have you stumbled across that? Oh, that's good. I'm going to listen to this message. Right? You never heard it before. You never heard of the preacher before. We got people listening from all over the world tuning in this morning at 1030 to hear my joke. 
because they want to use them. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Even if they put them in books. I don't want royalties. Right? You know what? People tune in to hear a message. Why? Because, because they're saying, oh, Lord, if you're real, show me how to get out of this mess I'm in. Help me, Lord. Right? So they're crying out to the Father. And then they stumble across a message that we're preaching this morning. And it helps them and encourages them. So that's why, you know what, we, 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 I just flow with whatever God's put on my heart. And that's why I said, did Braden say that? Because obviously it's important if we're saying it every week. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> to set the captives free, to draw people unto the kingdom, to know that, 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 that Jeremiah 29, 11 exists. Yeah. Right? That I have a plan for you. This is your daddy in heaven saying it to you. He has a plan for you. Right. You're not in this house by accident. You're not listening online by accident. Right. Amen? Amen? You're listening and you're here because God's plan for you is taking place. You might go, man, I've been sitting in the same place for a long time. You know what? Sometimes we have to have patience. Amen? Yeah. And you might say, if I needed that many patience, I would have been a doctor. <laughs> right? But how many, how many have had to have a lot of patience yep. waiting on the Lord? The Bible says, don't rush the Lord. The Bible doesn't say, he's going to move quickly in your life because you're so perfect. The Bible says, wait upon the Lord, and he'll renew your strength so that you can endure, right? Amen. Anyway, so let's go to Exodus. Exodus. Uh, chapter 14, that, 10 chap to 16. That's the one. Exodus chapter 10. 14, 10 to 16. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves in Egypt that we... What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you that this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea and divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Amen? And you can read the rest if you want, but that's, that's, that's where I wanted to stop this morning in that uh, passage. Um, first of all, I want to point out that, you know, first of all, they're excited when they're leaving Egypt, right? they loaded up all the gold and all the goods and they're, and they're leaving and they're like, you know, excited because now they're leaving slavery that they've been in for 400 years, right? So they're, so they're finally free and they're excited about it. But the moment that you run into trouble, so it's just like you and I, we get free and the moment that we run into trouble, we begin to go, oh God, where are you? I'd rather be back in my slavery, right? They're saying, we didn't ask you, Moses, to lead us out of this. Yes, they did. Right? They did. In Exodus chapter 3, when God shows up to Moses in the burning bush, Right? Read the passage and read Exodus chapter 3. It says that the Lord showed up to Moses in a burning bush and says, I'm concerned about my people. I'm worried about their slavery. I heard their cry for help. Right? He hears your cry for help when you ask him. When you're, when you're sitting there, even if you've been a Christian for 50 years, and you're feeling like you're struggling, you're feeling like you're drowning, he's looking for you to cry out to him. You say, well, where is God in my life? Where are you in his life? Like, where are you in God's life? What are you doing for the kingdom? How are you crying out so that God can give you the answers you need to overcome what you need to overcome? Right? So they're, so they're in slavery, and, God, and they're crying out, and God's coming to set them free. He gets Moses, brings him through all those miracle signs, the plagues, the, the blood on the doorposts, such powerful miracles gives them all the gold and stuff out of Egypt. The wagons load, wagon loads of, of, of jewels and gold and all this clothing, everything they need, right? And, uh, and there they are. 
all of a sudden, here comes the enemy. After all that, why would you, why would you doubt God's power? But that's, our na- that's how the enemy works. He comes with real quickly. How many know the Bible says that when you sow a seed into someone's life, the enemy comes quickly to rob it? Right? The enemy comes quickly to steal the seed that's been sown. That's Bible. So here you have them. So what do, you, what do you think the enemy is doing here? They look back. They see Pharaoh's army coming. They're freaking out. Right? Instead of saying, Lord, you've set us free. Claiming all the victories that they've taken. You, you helped us. You, you, we've seen the plagues. We, you, wrote, you raised Moses up to come and set us free. Instead of looking at it that way, they, they begin to... Moses and God, where are you? And you brought us out here just to die. And, and they start whining and complaining. And I'm saying this because we need to watch our mouths. You're born again. The Bible says that I have a plan for you. Right? So if you're going through something, say, God, you have a plan for me. You have a plan to prosper me. You have a plan to, for me to be successful. You have a plan for me to be who you called me to be. And if your plan for me is to leave this earth, then Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. But we worry about death because we want all these things. We look at what we have and we go, oh, I'm going to miss that nice car. (laughs) Right? We have no idea. God's got a mansion for you. It's beautiful. I'm not saying we should rush to want to get there. I'm saying we should rush to want to win people to Christ so they can get there. Because you know the truth. So the enemy comes and says, who do you think you are? Just like he's talking to these guys. What what does God tell Moses? Just get going. (laughs) Just just move, right? What are you doing? Are we moving? Are we going into the world and preaching the gospel? Are we going out there witnessing to people with the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of you? Are you allowing the enemy to speak fear into your life? Are you allowing the enemy to take control of your life with your life circumstances? Oh, Lord, I can't go talk to somebody right now. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay rent. Lord, I can't go talk to somebody because I don't have enough gas to get from here to Tim Hortons. I have enough for coffee because there's always enough for coffee. (laughs) Amen? But the enemy comes and he speaks to you and he says all these lies to hinder you, to to make you doubt God, to make you doubt who you are, just like he did in the garden. Did God really say don't eat from that tree? Make you think, right? Where is God? Like, you know, you're going through something. Where is God? He's not listening to you. Who do you think you are? Look what you've done. You're such a sinner. You're a horrible person. You should just kill yourself. Right? Is that not the voice of the enemy? The enemy comes to kill, rob, and destroy. So anyway, they get moving across the waters, right? What happens? They come out on the other side and dry ground. The army gets swallowed up. They're in a complete army. The enemy, all of Pharaoh's best fighters, his captains, they all drowned in the sea. Is that right? That's what the Bible says, right? So then they get on the other side, and Moses says, "Woo! let's sing. So they sing, sing, sing. <laughs> right? And I was going to read the next scripture, and it talks about them singing. Right? Next is what? Exodus 15, 1 to 3. 1 to 3 talks about Moses singing, right? What were they singing? Then Moses and the people of Israel sang the song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. (laughs) This is my God, and I will praise him. Isn't that right? My father's God, and I will exalt him. Amen. The the (laughs) Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Yes. This is who, this is the same God that brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery. This is the same God that said, okay, boys, you're, 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 you're out of here now. I'm setting you free. Load up all the goods. It's all yours. Wagon loads of jewels and go. They got to go on dry ground across, you know. This is the same God. And so they're singing because all the army has been drowned and they're, they're happy. Would you call them happy? Do you think when you're singing you're happy? Amen? So they're happy. They're singing, worshiping the Lord. And then it goes on in 
in uh, Exodus 15, uh, 20 to 21. What does it say? Oh, can't hear you, sister. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine and led all the women as they played their tambourines and danced. And Miriam sang this song, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. So they're just singing about the enemy being taken out, right? So, so Moses is singing, all the, everybody's singing, and then the women grab tambourines and all the women is just singing, having a great worship time, praising the Lord, excited about their new freedom, excited about the Lord's power. He split the seas, allowed you to walk through. He opened your heart. He allowed you to have salvation today. Amen? He opened your heart. He said, come into the kingdom. Because the Bible says that you didn't choose him, he chose you. So if you're wondering why you've been talking to some about Jesus and they're not giving their heart to Christ, it's because the time isn't right. Right? That's why you got labeled Bible thumper because you're trying to hit people with the Bible that aren't ready to receive. You cannot lead, you cannot make a horse drink, you can only lead him to the water. Right? I'm not saying you don't tell people about Jesus, you tell everybody about Jesus. But people that receive him are ready to receive him. And then you need to disciple them. Right? Don't just say, don't go out there and witness to somebody and not give them any direction. You don't lead somebody to Christ and then have a great day. That's like giving somebody a fishing rod and don't show them where the lake is. <laughs> All right? I want to bless you with this fishing rod. But we're in the desert. Yeah, I know. All I have. All right? You want to give somebody a tool that they can use to feed themselves, and you want to show them how to do it. Right? So how do we feed our souls? We teach one another. I'm not the only teacher. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just a, a loud preacher to stir you up so that you'll go and use your gifts, your teaching abilities. You say, well, if you pastor, I don't have a degree. You don't need a degree. You need the Bible. Bible school only taught me how to read the Bible. <laughs> I'm telling you, what, you know, that's what you do. You read the Bible. Then what happens when you go on as, as the, the women are all singing, they're shaking tambourines, and they're, can you imagine how loud that was? There's probably like a million or a million and a half women. And, and all the men, everybody's singing. Wow. Just shake the desert. No wonder they found water. <laughs> it just broke the ground. Brought the water up. Amen? Let's read. Exodus 15. 22 to 24. Then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the desert of Shur. They traveled in the desert for three days Singing. without finding any water. When they no came water. into the oasis of Moriah... The water was too bitter to drink, so they called the place Moriah, which means bitter. Then the people complained and turned <laughs> against Moses. What are we going to drink, they demanded. Every time we come up against a problem, you know, this is the thing. So here's what happened, is that you got saved, and then you came to church here, and we worship together, and we praise the Lord together, and then you have a problem because all hell's coming against you because you gave your heart to Christ. You have to remember that when you give your heart to Christ, you paint a target on your back, and it's a good thing. Because I'd rather be, I'd rather be saved and attacked than not saved and go to hell. Right. <laughs> right? So, so you get saved, and then all hell's coming against you. And instead of going to the Lord and asking him to help you, you complain to me or someone else in the church about somebody else in the church. Right? Well, I can't believe so-and-so is acting that way. I can't believe you're talking that way. <laughs> right? I, I'm just being real. We're just talking this morning. I'm talking about the children of Israel. This is the Old Testament. Years gone by. We're much more saved now. <laughs> hey, we're much better now. I mean, yeah, we may not, it may, it may get cold in our house and we don't have a cloud of fire that shows up. You know, it may get hot in our house and we don't have an air, we don't have a, a, you know, an air conditioner show up. 
but, but, God, but God would do, up, do that to the Israelites as they're traveling through the desert in the hot sun, right? Yeah. He'd cover them with a cloud, keep them cool. Why? Because he has a plan for them. He was, had a plan for them. Why, why are they being set free from Egypt? Because he says, I have a plan for you. I want to set you free from your captivity. Nothing's changed to now. Here's the thing. Now you have them at their, at they, they're coming to the water. They find the water to be bitter. And instead of saying, Lord, thank you for delivering us. Hallelujah. Like, hey, guys, let's have a prayer meeting. Let's get around and worship some more. Because God can provide. He split the sea. He set us free from captivity. He's kept us alive. And we didn't freeze in the desert. He's kept us from burning up in the desert. He's going to give us water. Right? But instead, the first thing that comes, the enemy comes with all vengeance to attack your mind. And he begins to put doubt in your mind. Look what he's done now. Now you're out here in the sea. Now you're out here in the desert. And now you've just come to a bitter water. He's, God just wanted to torture you. Why don't you just go back to Egypt? Because you're better off there. Right? Because that's what you want to do. The moment that you get under attack, you want to go back to your captivity. Because you forget what captivity looked like when you began to cry out to him to set you free. And trust me, the children of Israel cried out to the Lord as they were being be beaten and, and butchered. Remember when Moses was rescued? All the, all the, ba all the male babies were being butchered. Right? That's, what, that's, that's where you want to go back to? You want to go back to your slavery? You want to go back to captivity when Jesus Christ shed his blood and died for you so that you could have freedom and liberty? And you want to go back to slavery? No, you need to go forwards and you need to push through and trust in the Lord and he will renew your strength. And if you die doing it, then die happy and saved. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm saved. I'm, saved. I'm, staying that way. I'm staying that way. Saved. saved. Pushing, forward. Pushing forward. Pushing the gospel. Pushing the, gospel. the good, news. good news in Jesus' name. Overcoming. Overcoming. So what happens? Moses looks around. God gives him a vision. Oh, throw that stick in the water. It'll make it good. God has all, God's always got a solution for your problem. But the problem is we allow our problem to overcome us. We allow what we're seeing, the circumstances, to overcome our decision to follow the Lord. And if we just stop and say, Lord, you know my situation. Talk to him like you're talking to me. Right? And I'm not saying don't come to see me if you have a problem. I'm saying come and see me if you have a problem. But I'm saying make him your first choice. And then just come and share with me what the problem is. And watch how God will deliver you. Amen? Because if you come to me with the wrong heart, then I can't help you. Right? If you come to me with a bitter heart towards the Lord, then you're in trouble. Right? You need to not be bitter towards the Lord. Because he's the one that set you free. Amen. So worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. What's my next scripture? James 4, 7, and 8. I think when the light goes out, you got 20 minutes, right? So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Okay, so what? Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right? So, so when, we're going at, when we're in that battle, because we know that the, the battle's the Lord's to begin with. That's what the Bible says, right? So if you read your Bible, you'll get all of this. If you come to Bible study, you'll learn about this, won't you? If you have any questions, come to Bible study. Come to Bible study and learn all about resisting the devil and he'll flee. What does that look like? That looks like instead of whining and complaining to Moses and saying, God, you've just brought us out here to kill us, you resist those thoughts, right? Because the Bible says, hold every thought captive. Why do you want to hold every thought captive? So that you can think about what you're about to say before you say it. How many, how many got in trouble because they said something they wish you wouldn't have ever said? <laughs> huh? You know, you, you speak before you think. Have you ever heard that your mom say? You speak before you think, kid. You know? I, I think I hear that even as an adult. <laughs> Even my wife has told me, careful. Because sometimes you get riled up about things. Right? 
How many of you know what I'm talking about? You get riled up about things. Someone ticks you off. Someone lies about you, and you're like, oh, hmm, how do I get back at them? See, the evil man comes thinking. What can I do? How do I hit them with a bus? <laughs> you know, but that's what you think, right? Because you want to destroy them. I can't believe they're talking about me that way. And then the still small voice, voice of your wife goes, pray for them. <laughs> Just pray for them. Let those other thoughts go. <laughs> that's wisdom, right? Hold every thought captive. Stop. Resist the devil. And it works. I woke up this morning with a repentant heart. And uh, how many know in the ministry, as, as Christians, we get attacked? And sometimes we allow our flesh to go, Ugh. you know? Things happen and things are said. And, and then you wake up and you go, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me for my flesh. It, the Bible says my flesh is weak, right? Resist the devil and he will flee. Or someone said, resist the devil and he has fleas. So resist the devil, he will flee. One more scripture. What's the next scripture? Romans 5, 3, and 4. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confidence, hope of salvation. Amen? We go through the trials to develop us, to, to help us to grow, not to hurt us. Because the plan for the God's, God's plan for you is to see you prosper, to see you grow, right? To see you be a part of a great body of believers. Not to say that, let me, let me remind you, and those of you that are listening online, God does not bring you to somewhere by accident. He is not a God that goes, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know, I made a mistake. You need to go to the other church. Those guys talk about too much truth. <laughs> Those guys talk about too much of the Bible. You need to go to a church where, where they don't really believe in me. Or they don't, they don't lift their hands to me. Right? How many know that the Bible says, lift your hands to the Lord? Amen. He says, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, clap your hands and praise him. Lift your hands to heaven. What does lifting your hands to heaven mean? It means you're surrendering. Why would you not want to surrender to daddy? You are a stubborn, ignorant, stiff-necked child if you don't surrender to daddy. You are full of pride and religion if you can't humble yourself and lift your hands. Right? The Bible says lift your hands. A baby learns, and that's why the Bible can, 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 uh, talks about being childlike faith, right? Because a child, when they want to be picked up or they're hurt, they lift their hands. Pick me up, Daddy. He is your Father. He is your Savior. Nobody on this planet can help you but Him. I can give you thoughts. You know, I can say, resist the devil and he'll flee. But He's going to come back. <laughs> when people get saved, they go, welcome to the fight. You're part of God's army now. Why does God need an army? So we can fight. <laughs> Why, what are we fighting? We're fighting the devil. Principalities of darkness. We wrestle without weapons that are physical, but we wrestle with fe oh, the spiritual uh, fight. Amen with weapons that are not carnal, but, but spiritual. Amen? Amen? We wrestle. Why? Because we're winning a battle. And if you trust in the Lord, he will defeat your enemies. Doesn't have the Bible say in Psalms 23, it says that he will, he will have set a table in the presence of your enemy? So why don't we just uh, 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 come to that place and say, enemy, you come. And my Lord, my Savior, has set a table in front of us. I'm going to eat while you get trampled. Amen? Did you not say that the enemy will be your footstool or something? <laughs> he, says, he says, I'm going to anoint your head with oil. 
and your cup's going to run over. How can your cup run over? How can he anoint you with oil if you're not doing anything? You need to step into the ministry that he's given you. Amen? Amen. Do what he's called you to do. Humble yourself. Seek him. Lift your hands to heaven. And when someone looks at you because you're lifting your hands to heaven, help them lift their hands to heaven. They're your arms sore? Do you need help? Because it's humbling, right? How many know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in a Catholic church and want to lift your hands to heaven? (laughs) Have you ever been in a church where they don't lift their hands and it's like... (laughs) And you're just awkward because you want to lift your hands, but nobody else is. I've been there. I've been in conferences where it's like, you know, just not comfortable. I love our freedom of our church. Because we can dance. We can shout. We can praise him. Amen? Amen. Father, I give you praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for this morning. I thank you that there is no other way to the Father but through you. Lord, I lift up my, my, my friend Evan Simpson's family. And I ask you to be with that family as they lost a great man. Lord, but I know he's with you this morning. I know he's with you today. And when he left his body, Father, I know he went to you. And so I thank you for that. I thank you that he's, he, he made the decision years ago to, to say, Lord, come into my life. He made that decision. And now I have confidence that he is in heaven. Amen? So, Father, I thank you for those that are out there this morning that are struggling, those that are fighting a battle, those that are up against the enemy right now. I pray right now that you give them the strength they need to resist that devil and watch him flee. I thank you, Lord, that you are, you are our overcomer. It is by us humbling ourselves and getting on our faces and crying out to you that we are free. We don't get free in pride. We don't get free in religion. We get free in humbling ourselves in your presence. Humble us today, Lord. And make us a brand new. Give us a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Breathe on us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thanks for tuning in this morning. And uh, we'll see you next week at 1030. Amen.